There's also a couple of other things that we've got hidden here at the moment, which you can get to by clicking these little buttons down the bottom. The first one of those is our clip launch modes, which allows us to adjust how Live reacts when we click the play button. You get multiple different modes, which each have slightly different features. For example, we can go to the toggle mode, which allows us to toggle the clip on and off by clicking the play button. As we can see there. So you click it once, it'll play the clip, click it again, and it will stop the clip, which is really handy. We've also got the gate mode, which only plays the clip for as long as you've got the play button held down. As soon as I take my finger off the mouse button, the clip will stop playing. And finally, we've got our repeat mode, which you can just keep clicking the clip and it will automatically go back to the start every time. Those features can be particularly handy, especially when you're in a live situation and you've got a MIDI controller set up to work with your different clips. You've also got controls to change the quantization of the clip, for example, when it comes in. So at the moment we're using the global quantization, which you can adjust up the top. It's currently set to one bar. Or we could choose to use a different quantization value for this clip. For example, we could go for a quarter of a bar. And as you can see, then allows us to re-trigger the clip after every quarter of a bar, which is quite handy. So we'll just go back to the, the default launch mode there and the global quantization. You've also got some follow actions to determine how Live reacts once that clip has finished playing. And you can select different modes. For example, you can get the clip to stop or play again, play the previous or the next clip if you've got multiple clips set up in the one channel. You can also get it to play the first or the last clip in, in a group. Live 8 defines a group as follows. So if we have three clips, then the top one would be the first clip, the bottom one would be the last clip. If we then create a second group by copying multiple clips, because there's a space in between the different clips, that then gives us two separate groups, two in independent groups on that one channel. So for example, if we were playing a clip from the first group and its follow action was set to last, it would actually end up playing this third clip here, rather than going down to the, the second clip in the second group. So you can get all sorts of interesting things happening with all of those features. So just delete those couple of extra ones for the moment. And as you can see, you've also got two other options, which is any and other. Any will play any clip It'll just pick a random one from the group and start playing that once the first one finishes. Or you can go to other, which will play any other clip except for the one that was playing. Those ones are, are really quite handy if you want to try and get live to come up with something that's a bit random, which can be quite handy. You can also set, for example, two different follow actions and then set the, the ratio between them. So if we set both of those to 1, there'd then be a 50-50 chance that it would either play the same clip again or go to the next one in the group. So many, many different handy features that you can come across there. So again, we'll just turn those off for the moment and hide our clip launch settings. The other panel which we get to by clicking on the little E button is our envelopes, which allows you to actually have automation inside the clip itself which is quite handy. So for example, we could click on transpose and that would then allow us to adjust the transpose for different parts of the clip. So if we wanted this section to transpose up six semitones, we can do that like so. And then if we hit play, as you can see, all sorts of handy things you can do with that. So we'll just undo that for the moment. You can undo by going to the edit menu and selecting undo or just using the control Z shortcut, which is quite handy. 
You've also got other options to be able to adjust your volume and your panning of the clip as well. One of the other handy features of the envelopes is the ability to either link the looping and the start and end times to the same as the actual audio. We can unlink that and then adjust the start and end time and the looping of our envelopes completely independently of the audio itself. So it adds a whole pile more handy features there. For example, if we wanted to just loop the envelope over two bars and loop the audio over four bars, we can do that as we can see there. So if we go back to our audio, you can see that that's still looping over four bars. If we open up our envelopes, that's just giving us two bars there and starting again at the end of the second bar. So even though we've only got these three transpose volume and pan controls available as buttons here, you can also access any other effects that you have on that channel. So for example, we'll grab ourselves one of Live's auto filters and we'll just chuck that one on the channel. We're going to go for a bandpass filter, like so. Move it down in the frequency spectrum because we're working with a, a bass sound. And we're just going to click on the frequency control there. And then if we go back to our clip, which you can get to by clicking Shift and Tab, you can then see that our envelope has now selected the auto filter frequency for us. So if we wanted to adjust how that one's coming in, we can just edit the automation for it as so. If we play that one, and you get all sorts of really interesting things happening by automating all the different effects on the different as you can see there we get a bit of nice filtered movement happening in our sound that's just a bit of a rough example feel free to experiment I regularly will use multiple different lanes of clip automation on a single clip to get the, the feel and the movement that I'm after. So we're just going to delete all of that automation at the moment. Again, just using Control Z to undo it all. So also just remove that auto filter, like so. So now we'll chuck a, a couple of extra clips in there and see what sort of a cool sound we can get to finish this off. And as you'll see, Live will automatically make sure that all of the tempos are sort of locked together so that everything's in sync and in time, which is one of the most handy features that you'll come across in Live. By going over to the right-hand side here, we can see our scene controls. By clicking on the play button for the first scene, we'll play any clips in that row all at the same time as you can see. So that's our introduction to working with live clips. We will also be producing a further tutorial on warping audio clips and audio in live. So keep your eye out for that one. And hope to see you again in another Ben Ross's Conservatorium of Audio tutorial. Thanks for watching.